let's continue talking about Middle Woodland culture in the Southeast. I've already talked about early Middle Woodland culture as represented by the Marksville site and late Middle Woodland culture as represented by Copina. Today, in this lecture, I wanna talk about Swift Creek and a touch of the Conistee, both late Middle Woodland cultures in the Southeast. Swift Creek culture from AD 100 to 750 is found mostly in Georgia, but also into Alabama, Northern Florida, and perhaps a tiny bit into South Carolina. It's marked by a distinctive curvilinear stamped pottery resulting from carved wooden paddles. Their diet consisted mostly of wild plants and animals. However, little flotation has been done at Swift Creek sites, so we haven't really done a good job of recovering small plant remains. We know that they did grow squash, and late in the period, a little bit of maize has been found, but it's not necessarily in the diet of humans. We find scattered households or fairly small villages that seem to come together at mound centers. This appears to be a lineage-centered organization of feasting and mortuary activities. Major village and mound sites are located along the major routes of transportation, especially north and south along the Chattahoochee River. Swift Creek appears to have been trading Gulf Marine Shell to people further inland. Minor centers and other sites appear to control local resources, such as mica. Others may have been just ideological ties rather than resource ties. Vessel shapes among the Swift Creek include open jars and bowls, often with podal supports. As you see here, this kind of little squared off corners on the bottom. Some pottery vessels tend to have notched or scalloped rims. Swift Creek is most famous for its elaborate designs stamped with wooden paddles onto the pottery surfaces. Many of these designs have animal or cosmological motifs. Karen Adams points out core design elements, which were reduplicated in execution. On the top here, I show reconstructed wooden paddles, like those used to stamp pottery designs. It appears the wooden paddles were traded. We can trace direct interaction through finding the same design at different sites. Now you might ask yourself, well, how do you know it was the paddles that were being traded and not the pottery vessels? It turns out that the clay is local not traded. And when you look at close-ups of some of these uh, designs stamped into the pottery from very different sites, different states, you can see the de same design flaw. So it's unique to that paddle. This illustrates some of the sherds from the leak site in northwestern Georgia, along with a figurine head. Clearly, Swift Creek constitutes a number of distinct societies who shared a, a way of making pottery, a ceramic tradition, and who were also united by trading with each other. The Mandeville site in southwestern Georgia on the lower Chattahoochee River included a 40-acre village, a large rectangular platform mound, and a conical burial mound. Here we find trading ties both to Florida and to Southern Indiana. If you look at the bottom right, you'll see a Mandeville clay figurine. And on the left, from the contemporaneous site of the man site in Southern Indiana, another clay figurine that looks very similar. The platform mound, Mound A at the Mandeville site was 14 feet tall and 170 by 270 feet at the base. It was constructed in layers through time of stiff yellow clay capped with brightly colored sand. Each summit was covered in midden and burnt areas, indicating periodic feasting on top of this platform. Mound B, the conical burial mound, was six feet tall and 100 feet in diameter. Here we found burial pits that had both primary 
and secondary burials placed around the edge of the original mound and then the mound was built over them and capped uh, so both the burials and the mound had uh, layers capping them grave goods at this mound included copper pan pipes ear spools clay platform pipes pottery ceramic figurines prismatic blades greenstone celts mica and galena Moving now to the Appalachian summit, in the late Middle Woodland, we find the Conestee phase, AD 200 to 800. These people made pottery that was very thin walled and fine sand tempered. The forms included hemispherical bowls, conical jars, and flat bottomed potal jars. The Conestee people lived in large villages in the floodplains of major streams, and they were agriculturalists growing the eastern agricultural complex crops. Their pottery was usually plain or simple stamped or as you see on the bottom brushed. The Garden Creek Mound number two site typifies the Conestee. This site had a village and a platform mound built in two stages over the village midden. Recovered from this site were a number of exotic artifacts including clay figurines like this one here, prismatic chert blades like these, copper sheets, beads, a pen, and Hopewell vessels. Perhaps they were trading mica to the Ohio Hopewell. However, they were also trading with the Swift Creek people, especially after the end of the Ohio Hopewell. Additionally, they appear to have ties to Illinois Hopewell. Overall, during the Middle Woodland in the Southeast, subsistence was dependent on growing domesticated crops, and in particular, Eastern agricultural complex crops. So at any one of these uh, Middle Woodland sites, you would expect to find high numbers of kinopod and maygrass. They were also growing domesticated squash, and very little maize has been found, and it does not appear to have yet been in the diet of humans. Of course, they also continued hunting, fishing, and gathering wild nuts and fruits. <music>